Spurs winning the game at Kenilworth Road by a goal to nil and it's a win that has taken them top of the yeah. Premier League. That, of course, could change today mm-hmm. uh, with what happens at the Emirates. Um, but it was a, a dominant first half in particular, yeah. I think, by Spurs. They're 12 shots to three for Luton and three on target, none for the home side. Um <sighs> I mean, there's quite a lot to say here. Well, it was eventful because Mm. obviously Tottenham went down to 10 men in the first half after the Sumo. Yeah, and you know what? I think we should praise the referee, John Brooks, for this one because they've got a lot of stick, the the officials recently, with a lot of the VAR decisions. Obviously, the the fiasco in the Tottenham Liverpool game as well. But that was the right decision. I mean, an Mm. absolute clear cut dive from Eve Sumo, having been booked, what, five or six minutes before? Yeah. Um, no complaints. Great refereeing. We're, we, we're on air a lot and we talk about, you know, mistakes and VAR in the recent weeks and then you see a referee get a call absolutely perfectly placed yeah. to make that decision. Yeah. Um, the game. Okay, Go Nat, on. right? The game. This is where when you see a manager who you might say, well, Tottenham have had a sort of start and the people they've, or the teams they've played, that you know, they've... They've, they've had decent results in, but is this a real stern test for them? The thing that stuck out for me yesterday was that, and it was the determination of a team. You think about this now. They've lost Harry Kane. Mm-hmm. With Charleston, they're oh, carrying. Yeah. They're carrying at the mm-hmm. moment. He was off after 40, 45 minutes yesterday. Yeah. And Son was really poor. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you've got already three forwards I've just mentioned, and they've gone on to win a game. Now, two centre-halves, Romero and Van, uh, Van de Ven, yeah. were superb. They yeah. were, really were. And now I'm going to give credit to the manager because Postacoglu, what he did yesterday, he goes down to 10 men and as the game wore on, he brought in Ben Davis, Royale, Emerson Royale and Oliver Skip all came on and ended up with a back five because he knew that Luton were going to come all out wide, balls were going to come in and he stopped them as well as he could. And I thought that in itself showed you of a manager who knows what's going on in the game. He spotted the problems mm, mm. and they've enabled Tottenham to win the game, 1-0. Yeah. And and that's to him as well because it would have been quite easy to make different types of changes, like for like. He saw there was a problem as the game wore on because, you know, Luton are a little bit unfortunate. They're one of them teams now that are in nearly every game they play, but they're coming out the wrong end. They're getting beat. You know, they're not getting enough out of the game. Mm-hmm. But they're in every game at the moment. And I think that's what Rob Edwards can take away, that his team are not there. You know, we talked earlier about Sheffield United getting beaten 8-0. That's not going to happen with Luton. They're a, they're a side that are organised yeah. enough to make it difficult. A, a fair play to Postacoglu yesterday because he saw the danger, he reacted to it, and they, they've they had... So I can't remember Son playing... He was just not the son we know he can be. And he's been brilliant, you know, at times this season. Richarlison, I don't know what they do with Richarlison because it feels like he just hasn't got a good game in him at the moment for whatever reason, because we know he's had issues. Um, He's just not playing to the level that he would want as a manager. Yeah, certainly. Um, Let's hear, shall we, from Ange Postacoglu, because he said after the win, he was proud to have a team that showed great character after going down a man. It's not the first time they've shown character, you know. We've been behind in a lot of games. We've had to score late. Um, you know, that's, that's the times where you show that. And like I said, it's a credit to them. Um, there's the football, obviously, and I think our football's been good, but the way they've really come together as a group and, you know, like you said, showing that character and resilience for the, whatever ch- the challenge may be. And that is absolutely right. There is a character in this team. We're mm. seeing it week in, week out. Um, I, I quite like as well. You mentioned the partnership with Van der Ven and Romero. You can add in the fact you've got Udoki there as a mm. left back. Okay, Pedro Porro is uh, is the right back. But this is a new back line for Spurs. New, a new I was just about yeah. to say a new keeper. Yesterday we were talking about the, ahead of the Man United Brentford game that again both of those sides have new keepers, and it's sometimes quite hard to, to um, adjust with a new keeper. It takes time. We yeah. were saying it t- takes time to sort of build that relationship with everybody. And yet, gosh, it's seamless at Spurs. I know they're conceding, let's say. I know they didn't concede yesterday, but they have conceded goals in, in matches. So it's not absolutely perfect. Mm. But at the same time, they do look like a very settled defence and keeper there. Van der Ven has been a real big surprise. Yeah. Um, I say surprise because obviously you've got to give the credit to uh, the football club for the recruitment that's been made to bring mm. him in. They've and seen 22. someone. 22. Well, I mean, most people know he, he was 
known as the quickest defender in, in German football with Wolfsburg. Um, with that, he's a talented boy on the ball, looks incredibly assured. He reminds me of what Botman did at Newcastle. When 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 Newcastle bought Sven, uh, Sven Botman, Botman came in, he looked like a real immediate effect on the team. And Newcastle did exactly the same, by the way. Mm. They bought in Trippier, yep. Dan Byrne came in, yep. Botman came in, Keeper came in. They've done exactly the same as what Newcastle did. And look at the effects it had on Newcastle. So fair play to Tottenham and their recruitment. They're not involved in Europe. They've been knocked out of the Another League plus. Cup already. So at this present moment with the FA Cup to come in from January, all they have to focus on is the Premier League. So why are, are they being dismissed as p- potential title challengers? Because they still they don't look like a champions team to me. Um, I've seen them. I've seen nearly every game of Spurs this year, um, and there have been times when I think they are going to drop. They look like they're going to drop points. If we're wrong, and I'm wrong and they end up starting to get victories against some of the very elite teams. I mean, the North London derby was a really good game mm. because Tottenham were, for the, you know, for certainly in the first half, I was at the game, and Arsenal were really getting, were dominant in that area. But by the end of the game, Tottenham had got back into it and looked really dangerous and could have snatched it. Uh, but so, but you, you say, know. OK, getting points of elite teams, are you, are you dismissing Manchester United then as an elite team right now? I don't think anybody really thinks that Man United will challenge at the very top end of the table, uh, unless a lot changes. I mean, look, they've got a number of injuries, as we're going to talk about injuries later as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but there, there seems to be a lot of issues at Manchester United, so I don't really see them. Okay, but they being... beat Manchester United early this season. They got the point against... You're going to use the Liverpool one. But they got a point think... against Arsenal and <laughs> they beat Liverpool, okay, in controversial circumstances. My Very point controversial being, circumstances. My point being, Cass, is that they're unbeaten against yeah. three of the so-called big six. Well, there's a still to them. There is a still to this Tottenham team. And I don't want to use the word Spursy of the, you know, mm-hmm. what they've been accused of before. But there is that. There is the flair. And they've now when they if you're looking at a team and they start finding partnerships on the pitch, the loss of Harry Kane is a was devastating to Tottenham. If Harry Kane was in this top, uh, in this top, in, in well, this team. Up top in this up team. Up top in this team. <laughs> I know. I think. You know Madison what? in there. Madison now. And, um, and you know Son's been really good this year. He did have a good game yesterday, but he's been really good. Um, if he was there and they were playing this type of football, I think do you know what they'd have a chance. But I don't believe they can win the league with unless they make a major transfer because I just don't. Whatever the issues are with Richarlison, and you know, mm. hopefully he can get himself straight. But I just don't see that happening with obviously having not everybody. Being able to, you know, play their part. So your your suggestion is that they can only really be in the title race if they bring in some sort of a, a proper number nine, well, maybe striker of some variety. Ange Postecoglou like an will Tony. be saying to the football club. He'll be saying to the football club, look, for whatever reason why he's not playing well, that's no good to us. Yeah. We we yes, we're helping. We're trying to get him back into his best form, but he has to hit form at some time. Mm. You know, teams have won World Cups. Okay. Give Ash has won the World Cup for France and not had played any part. Oh, he played the game, but he didn't really have any impact in that team. But that a tournament is like seven games now. If you're talking over a course of a season, you're going to need your centre forward or a centre forward to deliver. You have to. Because if you look at all the title winners, look at what their centre forwards have done. You need goal yeah, from them. I, I do understand what you're saying. They have been linked with Ivan Tony, as have every single club, it feels. Um, we will. I'm sure they'll be thinking already and looking ahead to January and, and maybe a tussle for Ivan Tony. Well, if you add, add a forward into what they've already got, now you might think, oh, look, do I still think they win the, win the league? No, I wouldn't think that. I think they'd still be behind Man City and probably Arsenal, um, maybe Liverpool. But I just... You know, I just think it'd be really interesting. I think, if it, you know, a positive manager that he is and the way he plays football, if they added that, certainly would make a big difference. Mm. Well, it'll be interesting to see when they take on Manchester City. That is in early December. It's scheduled for December the 2nd. Not sure if that will change due to, you know, the usual commitments of broadcasting, but we will find out. Uh, and maybe that's when you can really say where they're at by that stage anyway. Okay. Uh, A good win nonetheless for Spurs. Go top of the table as a result. 